get into it. Um, to start us off, Jack, could you tell me a little bit about yourself and Mega Pro Tools? Yeah. Um, my name is Jack. I work at Mega Pro Tools. I've been here for about three years. I've been in marketing for about 15. Um, I work remotely out of Alberta, but Mega Pro Tools head office is based in British Columbia. Uh, and we are the original inventor of the retractable bit cartridge on multi-bit screwdrivers. So once upon a time, you had this multi-bit screwdriver, you had to unscrew the top, dump all the bits out into your hand, find the one that you wanted, and then dump them back in. Um, our, uh, you know, owner inventor, uh, he had a moment where he was doing some DIY projects one day where the bits kind of fell everywhere and he just knew there had to be a better way. And you know, decided that he was going to figure that out. And so he created this technology for a retractable cartridge that had held, holds all the bits um, nice and securely in place. Along that, um, he worked on prototyping and creating some additional technology that really helped with increasing productivity and decreasing fatigue. It's quite an ergonomic like feel in your hand. Uh, it's, uh, this is our 30th anniversary. So 2024 is a huge year for us. Um, we are one of the favorite drivers of tradespeople across the globe. Uh, we sometimes are like, when you know, you know, because the more you use your Mega Pro, the more you fall in love with it. And um, I'm kind of a really good example of that because I never in my entire life did I ever think that I was going to be as passionate as I am about a screwdriver. And now I am, I tell everybody about it. I recommend it all the time. I feel confident and excited about doing little like projects around the house. Um, so yeah, uh, 30 years. Uh, we're also uh, the New York Time wire cutters pick for um, best multi-bit screwdrivers. Nice. So you can Google us and check that out there. Um, we uh, work mostly in that hand tool space. Uh, and have a variety of drivers from kind of the original one that we talked about to a ratcheting version for precision version. Uh, we're working on a, a insulated version for electricians right now. So nice. uh, lots of fun, big focus on screwdrivers specifically um, and a big year for us because we're celebrating 30 years. 30 years, that's a huge milestone and congrats to you and the rest of the Mega Pro Tools family. Um, you, you kind of mentioned there around, you know, the the first kind of tool and how everything kind of just was falling everywhere and they thought, okay, we need to create something that is more succinct and, and more organized. And I can't help but reference, you know, that's why people look for a dam and, you know, things are kind of living everywhere yeah. and we need to find a, a system that can it really just help us be more efficient and effective. Um, what was kind of happening at your organization that led you to really look for a dam in the first place? Yeah. Um, when we were looking for a dam, our initial need wasn't actually file organization. It it was, but that wasn't why we were looking for some, like a, a solution. Um, we had come to a place where we were working with a bunch of different um, clients and stakeholders where we were constantly having, um, being asked for different assets or things that they could use to help them sell our tools. Like most of our business is B2B. We work with a distribution chain to get our uh, tools in the hands of customers. Uh, and we had just really identified what a time suck it was for us to be navigating these emails of like, hey, do you have a picture of this? Or hey, do you have a picture of that? Or do you have a spec sheet on that? Um, and yes, we had all of the things that they needed a place to be able to access this. Um, so as a first step into that, I had created like a really basic website where we had a bunch of pictures that you could download. Um, it was slow, load heavy. Uh, it got the job done. Um, and a lot of customers really appreciated that. And But we were going to leave the system that we were hosting that website through. And because it had become such a tool that clients had been interested in using, uh, we knew that we had to replace it. And so I had sought out to say, what can I do to replace this dealer portal, as we were calling it, um, in a way that would allow us to effectively get them the resources that they were looking for, while also being mindful of the amount of time we spent on those kind of asks. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, we started looking, or I started looking at dams, um, I looked at a different, a few different versions. Media Valet had that dealer portal. Um, 
And I had worked with a dam uh, once before in a past life. So I kind of knew what it was about. The further we went into um, what we could do in Media Valley, the more that we knew it was going to be able to support our business um, above and beyond that dealer portal and help us gain efficiencies um, in some of the work that we were doing so that we weren't leaking time through little asks that didn't need to be as um, cumbersome as they ended up being. Definitely. You touched on a couple kind of, I like to call them buzzwords that I, I tend to use quite often when talking about DAM and, you know, efficiency and and effectiveness and, and just being able to have those streamlined processes is, is often quite important. Um, can you describe kind of how you're using Media Valet today now that you've kind of got it up and running and um, kind of where you've had the systems before with the portal? How does that translate to Media Valet today? Yeah, so we use the portals quite heavily. Uh, we started out with this dealer portal and essentially we've put all of our different photography up on um, the Media Valet system. Uh, and then we've assigned them to various portals depending on who we're talking to. So for the dealer portal, all clients have access to this password protected portal. They can log in at any time and download any of the photos that are in there. There's training videos in there, there's sell sheets in there, there's spec sheets in there. Um, yeah, like any of those things that they would need to be able to create their own flyers. Um, it makes it so much easier for them because they can go and access it and do the work that they're trying to do in the moment as opposed to waiting for us to respond. And it's easier for us because now we're not dealing with those little things. And it's one of those things where, you know, getting them that photo on that ask, you know, maybe that's like a 90 second ask. But that time adds up. And I like to parallel that to the trades industry that we're working for like, with, because when we're working in trade, those workers are constantly like, time is money. Time is money. How do we make sure that we can be more effective with our time so that we can make more money? Um, and that's one of the things that we love about that driver being that um, increased productivity um, item to like make your life easier. Seconds add up and they do count in that long run. Um, and so... In that sense, from this client perspective, their time is saved, our time is saved. That's awesome. Uh, we also found that from a marketing perspective, we are constantly in this relationship with our sales team where they wanted collateral pieces from us that we had, we just couldn't find easily or they couldn't find easily or they they knew where it was or they forgot where it was. And um, we we would receive emails saying, hey, can I have this? Or, hey, can I have this? Or, hey, is this done? Um, and so we created a sales portal. And so I'll, I'll touch on, yes, I know we could have created sales user groups and let them into the dam specifically, but we have a wide range of technological capability on our sales team. And so in order to maximize how we are simplifying it for the sales team, they now have their own portal as well where they have like a section that shows all of the files that you need when you're onboarding a new client. Here are all of the sell sheets that we have broken down by driver. Here are all the sell sheets that we have broken down by industry. Here's our logo. Here is um, like a training video. Um, so for them as well, we're just getting rid of that back and forth of requests for things. They know that they can go to the portal. If, some, if a document is ready, it's on that portal. And they can go on it at any time uh, and download their um, information. I love from that. Directly. Yeah. Um, we also have started using it in intersection with operations um, where we had this process where operations was um, whenever they had to print a new card for our packaging, they would send us an email of the file and say, is this the right file? And we would look at the file and we'd say, yes, that is the right file. Um, again, just getting into that like time suck, time leakage space for everybody. Um, we've since created a portal of print ready files. Uh, and in that operations knows that these are the files that are active. This, they're the most up-to-date current version. And then they can just go in, download a file from there as well. Um, and then they have operations again, has another portal because we do a lot of work with clients where they might have their own packaging as well. Um, we do OEM work where we build drivers, like we manufacture drivers for somebody else's brand. We don't like say who that is, but 
um, we do have this list of files in order for us to get them their packaging appropriate as well. So we've created a client uh, package portal, same deal, operations can go in, know that those are the most correct accurate files and that we don't have to have this added touch point uh, back and forth on where where is this file saved and is this the right file? And we, we did end up in that situation like sometimes where they'd be like, hey, this is what we're gonna print and it wasn't the right file. Um, and so it's helped us clean up those, you know, little mistakes as well to be able to communicate with those different departments to make sure that what's available to them is the most up-to-date, accurate version. 100%. And and I think some really major points there around, you know, time is money and, you know, 90 seconds here and there, you know, if it's once, for sure it's 90 seconds, but if that's a hundred times, that's a lot of time suck in the day, right? So when we talk about efficiencies and and when you you talked about how you've used portals to be more efficient, it's both efficient for you and your team, but also for the people who are requesting those assets. They know that everything has been wrapped up in a nice little bow and said, here's here's the tools that you need. Go be free and have fun with them, right? So you, you can really put a lot of those efficiencies into the portals, which I think is a, a major call out for success on, on your side of things. So well done there. Yeah. Um, we're not just using portals. We do use the content delivery network as well. So in that case, um, for our catalog, for example, that's a really good one where we have multiple spaces on our website where the catalog is um, linked to uh, being able to have that direct content delivery link that we use in all of those spaces. So when our 2023 catalog, um, you know, was sunset and we brought in our 2024 one, um, we were able to change that file in the background in Media Valet, knowing that all of the links that we had in all of the various spaces were going to upload as well. And again, saving us that time where we only had to make that update in one place as opposed to like six places. Um, and it, it's just, it's little wins being able to gain that time back. Absolutely. And yeah, as you said, Time is money. So anything you can do, whether it's a portal or, or content delivery network, which, you know, CDN linking, uh, you have that kind of, you can rest easy knowing that things will be updated, but you don't have to then track down all of these other assets and have to go back to, you know, remember downloading and then re-uploading and then downloading and re-uploading. Remember those days? Those were the worst. Yeah. <laughs> so you definitely <laughs> found those efficiencies in your dam, which is uh, amazing to hear. Um, what kind of results or outcomes have you seen now that you're using Media Valley? Is there anything that you can kind of do now today that you couldn't do before? Yeah, I, it really, it does come down to the time saving. But the thing is, we do get a lot of feedback from clients on how appreciative they are of what we have for them. Um, I would say that our communication between departments is a lot more effective um, and our communication with those clients is a lot more effective. Like we're not hunting things. Um, we had reached this point at one point where, you know, in order to get the information that you needed, it should have just been like a quick answer. But now you're waiting two, three, four days for that answer to come back to you because of all of the different touch points and people that you're having to talk to. Um, and that's not the case anymore. We've we've gone from several days lag on certain requests to the information is there and you can access it instantly whenever you need. Amazing. Amazing to hear that. Uh, I can name off from our conversation so far a lot of what I would consider hot damn moments, but it would be great to hear, you know, what is your hot damn moment where you know, you had an experience where you were really impressed with media valet or really just helped you out. As I said, there's probably lots you could name, yeah. but is there one that kind of stands oh, out? Oh man, I just, I feel like it's like, there's so many and they're all so similar and it's, you know, anytime I need to share files, um, I can share them efficiently. I, I'm, I'm, you know, when you send it through email and you get that like exceeds attachment size, um, being able to use that to media valet, being able to set up these systems, um, being able to remove unnecessary tasks from really busy people's plates, like they all add up to just like the one big hot dam of this has been a really effective tool for us uh, and we can really only grow it from where we've started. And I'm sure there's a lot of empathy given that you are in the the tool business of creating tools that do make people's lives more effective and efficient and, and making that impact. And, you know, we're in the 
similar game where we're making a system or a software platform that is doing a similar thing, making people's lives more efficient and effective. So there's a lot of parallels, even though they're different industries, a lot of great parallels we can definitely uh, kind of pull from that. And as you said, lots okay. of hot damn moments, just having the right tool uh, to, to, to help you and your team be more efficient, both with uh, portals and linking and all that. It really aligns for sure. And I, it, I hear you say, make your life more efficient, but we throughout our whole 30 years, one of the driving forces with, behind us has been making your life easier. There's there's even a Make a Pro song, um, which has a cute story behind it. I won't go too far into it, but like most of it is like, make your life just a little bit easier with Make a Pro. I love um, that. So it is, it, it does super, super align. Because we do, our purpose is to help make your life easier. Like and not, I, I know we've talked about the trade side of things, but this is the kind of thing that should be in the kitchen drawer of every single house. Every single house needs a mega pro. Um, it is super efficient. It will make your life easier, whether you are assembling furniture or actually on a job site, um, those little moments add up and uh, it, it, there's definitely some parallels here. I feel like now the ball is in our court to make up a jingle or a tune at Media Valet. We'll have to circle back on that, but I think we need to match that energy. <laughs> I'd be interested to see if any other companies have jingles. That's amazing. Oh, I, I, I think that's fun. <laughs> um, love that. What uh, what advice would you have uh, for you know any other organization looking to maximize their operational efficiency um, and effectiveness with, with their dam? Yeah, I think it's really taking a look at the intersections that you have with the various departments and where those communication um, points are um, and recognizing, hey, is this something that we could save here and share more effectively? Um, and I don't, I've never worked at a place that has been super happy with how their file systems are structured. Um, I find that I'm constantly trying to like shape and organize that. And it can be difficult to find files in that kind of like file explorer SharePoint kind of way, um, especially because different brains have different thinking and where they think they should save something uh, might be different. And what I found with the dam is it allowed me to really streamline how I was saving files, where I was saving files, how I was categorizing files, and then sharing them out. Um, so it was like, here's your link, here's your portal, this is what you like, it just made it easier for everybody to get from point A to point B. But in order to do that, we needed to understand how we were interacting with the different part like departments and where those needs or friction points were. And so like understanding, you know, sales was finding friction because they didn't think that they could get access to the um, collateral that they needed when they needed. Yes, it was always on SharePoint the entire time and they always had access to it. And we, at one point we had a planner board with like links to where the SharePoint things were, but now they have one link that they go to whenever they need something. And if it's there, it's ready. And if it's not there, it's not ready. Right. But easy, we, easy. Like, we had to identify that, that point of saying like, how do we address this friction that is happening between these two departments? Because they absolutely need that stuff. And we are absolutely making that stuff for them. Um, but how do we get it to them in a way where people aren't kind of, you know, running around looking for it? Absolutely. And if they are running around looking for it, making sure that they they have the right approved content, they're not using yeah. something old and outdated. And I know you touched on kind of the, the, um, uh, the CDN linking before where it was, you know, 2023 has come and gone. We need to just update it. You can, you know, rest assured that, when you're linking those through CDN linking, you just update it in the dam and it's already taken care of. You don't have to track it down. That's really good advice that that you provided there. Thank you for that that feedback. Yeah, and it's really nice if we, we go into those versions as well to have that version history, to see that, mm -hmm. to be able to comment on like, oh, I I uploaded this because I needed to fix, like we've, we've had with the catalog where we've had the wrong like part number for something or like, okay, updated this version so that this part number is created. And that's all in there to be able mm -hmm. to track and follow and understand why we made the changes that we made. Um, yeah, and just again, just making sure that people aren't printing the wrong thing, making people sure people aren't sharing the wrong thing. Um, 
and just reducing the amount of time that marketing has had to kind of, you know, be this like hub of information. We still are, but now we're using the tool to distribute it instead of that human touch point of, oh yes, I've received this request. Oh yes, I'm going to go find this file. Now I'm going to like send it. And, like, Three days later. We just have <laughs> yeah. so much time back in our days, even though it definitely doesn't feel like that because we are doing so much, um, you know, especially with our big 30th anniversary this year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which I mean, even I'll tell you one more thing that we did with the, the dam is because we did do a bit of a campaign um, within the BC market where we had a whole bunch of digital file assets that we needed to send out. Um, and so again, we were able to use that media valley. I think it's called a light box um, to say, here's all the files to do with this like 30th anniversary campaign that we're doing and then send it off to the vendor that we are working with using media valet um and knowing that those were like the most up-to-date and accurate files and um that that sharing was easy for them as again having to post so I've, I've had it where people are like oh just send it to me in three different emails i don't want to send it to you in three different emails um but here use this link and you can get access to the full um you know light box or gallery or web gallery exactly. of um whatever I'm trying to send you. It's just gift wrapping everything that they need and saying, all right, self-serve, you've got this, you know, enabling okay. people to yeah. just grab what they need to and and not have to, you know, have these emails back and forth for a couple of days to make sure that you get the right asset. You know, you touched on a really good uh, synergy there between, you know, marketing and sales too. That's a very common um, kind of team dynamic and being able to use things like branded portals is, is quite impressive just to say, okay, sales team, here's your gift wrap branded portal. Here's everything you need. It's got all the information you can self-serve and, and they can take things as they need to. And um, I definitely wanted to highlight that today because I think that's a, a great relationship that you have with your sales team and making sure that they have everything that they need. Um, any any last uh, tips or, or advice that you would give uh, for anyone kind of working within the dam with a sales team right now? Oh, I mean, I think it's going to be unique to each team on, on what their individual needs are. Um, so I don't know what additional advice I could give. It, it would really be about sitting down with the different departments asking what are our main points of intersection? What are our main points of friction? What are the things that you're constantly needing from us? And recognizing if there's a pattern where you're constantly having to share the same thing over and over and over again, there's a better way. Um, and you can definitely set up a, a place where you can go and access everything that you need. And I mean, it just becomes, for sure, it makes everybody's life easier. I think you, if I can use a an industry pun, I think you, you hit the nail on the head there with that. So uh, great, great feedback on that. Um, well, Jack, you know, thank you so much for, for sharing your story today. And I'm sure it was highly valuable to those on the call today. Uh, just before we jump into some questions, I wanted to uh, pull up a quick poll um, if you want to learn more about any of the features covered today as well, such as branded portals, uh, please, please, please just let us know and uh, we'll be able to reach out to you and, and have those conversations. Perfect, we'll give everyone a moment to do the poll there. And then we'll uh, we'll take in some uh, some questions there as well. I think the poll's still running. Perfect. Looks like we got some questions here. Uh, question, in what areas would you like to see the DAM tool expanded in other departments? Yeah, we've been talking about how we can expand it into operations a little bit more. Uh, we have a lot of processes and operating procedures that, um, you know, are really important to follow. And we have an area that they're saved right now, but to be able to um, add them to the dam, add them to their own portal, be able to track that version history, um, we feel like that would be really helpful to be able to allow operations to use a lot of their files. Um, you know, as marketing, we went into this as like, how do we share photos? How do we share videos? Um, but Media Valley is above and beyond that. Like all sorts of files can be uploaded in that place. Um, and so 
we are currently investigating whether or not we want to do like um, it's an SOP, which is a standard operating procedure portal, um, which again would allow us to upload. These are the processes that you have to follow for all of these different tasks for, like throughout all of these different departments. Um, if, it, um, if a process changes, we check it out, we make the change, we check it back in, we have that version history with a comment on who changed it and why it was changed. Um, and so that is definitely one way that we would like to expand this and that we're currently kind of investigating. Love that. Excited to see that grow. Um, next question we have here as well is, you know, during the purchase of, of Media Valet and, and the evaluation there, could you explain how you, you got kind of buy-in from other large stakeholders um, and, and the higher ups within the organization? Yeah, I mean, it started out by identifying the fact that we did need to replace our original like single page website um, uh, dealer portal. Um, and so they knew I had been looking for this. Um, when we actually sat down and counted the number of people who are often asked for files and the amount of times that they're asked for files per week. Uh, and you know, if it was only just two minutes per file, all of a sudden that added up, we factored in, you know, we did some algebra, we factored in, you know, if this person was looking for these files 10 minutes a week, then that would add up to their, like this amount of their salary was going towards looking for files only. Um, and that quickly became way, way bigger than what the cost of the dam actually was on an annual basis. And so it was pretty easy to see that we would be able to get some significant, um, time savings from that human perspective and dollar savings because they'd be able to spend their time on, you know, other money-making things. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, the, the difference in the price point that we paid versus what we realized the amount of money we were spending on looking for files was, uh, it was a no-brainer. Love to hear that. Really understanding kind of the ROI, I think is a big, big um, kind of win there as well. You, you understood what was needed and and uh, had those conversations. Well, Jack, I think that's all for questions today. Um, but thank you for, for having this chat with me. Thanks for your time and and sharing your story. Very excited to hop on with you and and have a have a chat, you know, and, and thank you to everyone who who jumped in today and and uh, was able to attend. Uh, very excited to to see kind of where you take the dam, Jack. And I'm here with you. We'll work on it together yeah, and we'll we'll see we that will. growth and, and success. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was a lovely conversation. And, you know, we're we're just going to keep growing and becoming more efficient with what we're doing here. Perfect. Well, Jack, have a great rest of your day. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.